Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is the first of many revision videos to help you with your um, Year 11 exams and mock exams. So this one is um, covering just the first slide of the revision PowerPoint that I put together for you. And this is focusing on section A. So do bear in mind that even though it feels like I go over this stuff quite quickly, this could just be a one mark multiple choice question in the exam. So bear that in mind. Um, but we're going to go through the information on this slide here. So this stuff here is what we are going to be having a look at. So this is all on uh, slide one in that revision PowerPoint. Smart technology and manufacturing and specialised buildings. So the first thing, if we get straight into it, there are many different examples of machinery that is used in manufacturing. And you should hopefully have an understanding of what CAD and what CAM stand for. If you're not sure what that is, you might want to pause and go and find that out. Um, but basically CAD, computer aided design and CAM, computer aided manufacture. So you need to have a good awareness of that. Now, the thing that this little bit of information is talking about is how um, this is taken even further with kind of smart um, technology. OK, and the way that they do this quite often is to connect all of the different pieces of equipment together using sensors and using Wi-Fi and the Internet to make sure that all of these different bits of, of machinery can talk to each other and share information. So they call this, and it's a really odd term, it's called the Internet of Things, okay? Sometimes shortened to IOT. And it basically describes the connection of loads of different machines, devices to the Internet. So there's a bit more information on the next slide. So, like I said, the Internet of Things, this is the definition. So if you're making some notes during this revision video, you might want to make sure that you've got that written down. Um, and the word behind there, sorry, my big face is in the way, is share. So this is the connection of lots of different devices and machinery to the Internet so they can share data. And that can be useful in lots of different ways. For example, you could have uh, a till in a shop that collects a customer's order. Um, that could be connected directly through Wi-Fi to the factory that could then generate that um, order being processed. Um, the, the factory could then keep the shop up to date about when that's going to be delivered and keep the customer up to date of when they are going to receive their product. So you can see lots of things join together to share information. OK, this makes things really, really uh, efficient. Um, and make sure that, for example, if you um, had some machinery in your factory that was using a particular piece of material, if it ran out, it could, because it's connected to the Internet, it could communicate that and more material could be ordered rather than someone having to come up and go, oh, we run out of material. Um, it can be done automatically. OK. So there's a bit of an example here. Um, of how this is used in manufacturing. So this is kind of like an industry example. Um, this shows that you've got a piece of machinery here. So this machinery, who knows what it's making? It looks like it's um, packing something or doing whatever. And these are all things that can be monitored by this machine. It's got sensors on there to, men to uh, monitor um, basically the health of the machine. Now, depending on how well that machine is, if it's feeling a little bit under the weather, bit sad it could communicate that to the cloud up here and then that could be communicated further along the line and it sends an alert to someone who can then come and fix that machine and make it happy again okay so rather than that machine stopping breaking down and the manufacturing processes stopping this means that it can uh, be picked up before any problem is caused so that's a good example of machinery and factories being connected with the Internet of Things. This doesn't just happen in industry. 
You may have something like this at home. I know that we do. We have our heating controlled it by like a little pod. My husband won't let me have it over 18, which is really sad. So I get very cold. But we have an app on our phone that we can, um, you know, tell it to to get warmer or turn the heating on. It's connected through our Wi-Fi and we can communicate really easily. Uh, even if we're away from our home, we can say, right, we want the heating to come on before we get home. Um, sometimes you can get smart ovens. You can tell the oven to start preheating. You can um, get lots of different um, different types of devices that connect with, again, the Internet of Things to just speed up and make things a lot more streamlined. So I hope that makes sense. The Internet of Things and the sharing of data um, is a really important thing for you to know. Right. The next thing we're going to cover on this uh, particular revision video is this specialized buildings um, in, in industry. So lots of factories and lots of industry, um, kind of the big people in industry are now starting to um, make things called smart factories. So these tend to have um, kind of like Internet of Things. They tend to try and reduce the environmental impact of the factory in the first place, because as you can imagine, factories generate a lot of waste, waste, um, e energy can be wasted, pollution, waste materials, all sorts of different things. So by trying to think about smart factories, you're trying to reduce the environmental impact um, of your business. So there's an example here using water recycling systems to reduce water use. Um, also, what you don't want is you don't want your factory to have parts that aren't being used. So, for example, if you were manufacturing a certain product and then the demand for that product went down, half your factory that you're still lighting and heating and paying for is not being used. So, for example, you would benefit from using this which is where factories have modular components. So modular is little chunks, things that can be added or taken away when needed. Um, and it basically means that if your factory is uh, quiet and not doing much, you can take away, you can reduce the amount of um, factory space that you have. You can move it away or close it down or whatever. If you suddenly get busy again, you can bring in that machinery again and kind of um, get your factory um, back up to scale so it can respond to the demand um, of the customers. So basically, extra production space can be added if it is needed. OK, um, some other big advantages are that the use of things like robots and automation and 3D printing means that a lot of the machinery um, is a lot smaller and more contained. So it doesn't take up quite so much space within a factory. But important things to remember here are the modular, modular factories. So building on that a little bit, this is a, a plan for a modular factory for Nestle. This one is all about the environmental uh, impact. So you can see on the top here, they've got natural ventilation lit by natural lighting and solar tubes. They've got a slanted roof to collect rainwater so they can use that water rather than uh, kind of wastewater. You've got solar panels to heat up water within the building. You've got the roof is made from insulated metal sheet so you're not losing any heat. Um, and you can see that a lot of the energy for this factory is renewable. Okay, So they're kind of harnessing as much natural energy as they possibly can to reduce the environmental impact of their factory. Last thing I'm going to just go over one more time is this idea of a modular factory. So I like to think of this a little bit like Lego bricks. So if you had Lego, um, when you need less space, so less manufacturing is happening, you can take away bits that you don't need. You can close them down. So you would take away certain sections of your factory <clears throat> that don't need to be used. That's going to save you heating 
um, lighting, security potentially. So those can be taken down and taken out of use. If suddenly someone orders an absolute load of Lego, I mean, who wouldn't? You can then open these modules and put them back into use. OK, so you can then use all of your different modules again, opening up more manufacturing space when you need it. Right, that has covered the first slide of the revision PowerPoint. I hope you found that useful. More videos to come.